Good morning and welcome to another time as we get to spend in Sunday school. Blessings to everybody. We're going to give you a few moments to come on and um, allow you to be able to share the live on Facebook as well as on YouTube. We'll give you a few moments for that so that you can join us in our study for today. Our study today is titled Safety. And I'm really excited about it because as I was looking at it, preparing for it, it gave me so many thoughts about the safety that our relationship with God provides. And I hope that you have had a chance to do the home daily Bible readings and uh, that you were encouraged by that as well. So let's get started. And um, God bless everybody. And if you get a chance, will you just kind of say hi and let us know where you're watching from. And I see that our Facebook is live and so is our YouTube. So blessings, everybody. We'll give you a few moments for that. Okay. I want to see what y'all see. All right. There. God bless everybody. We're going to get started. We have several things to cover today, so I want to jump right in. So today our lesson text is coming from Jeremiah chapter 48. Um, and our verses 25 through um, 28. And I want to read that to you. And... Um, Let's just read that from our, our scriptures, if that's all right with you all. Gen Jeremiah 48, verses 25 through 28. Let's look there. This was such a good lesson to encourage us to really hone in on realizing the safety and the provision that's provided us through our relationship with God. And we can sometimes minimize that because so many other things seem tangible in our world. But our relationship is something that we are required to pursue with the Lord. And um, it can sometimes get pushed to the back burner because so many other things seem like a priority. But I think the scripture says it best. One thing was necessary, and that was to be in his presence. Let's look at this. And it says in Jeremiah 48, <clears throat> verses 25 through 28, it says, The horn of Moab is cut off. Why am I looking, looking there when I can look right here? Sorry. Um, the horn of Moab is cut off and his arm is broken, saith the Lord. Make ye him drunken, for he magnified himself against the Lord. Moab also has, shall wallow in his vomit, and he also shall be in derision. For was not Israel a derision unto thee? Was he found among thieves? For since thou spakest of him, thou skippest for joy. That is a statement. I want to insert that right there. Verse 28. O ye that dwell in Moab, leave the cities and dwell in the rock. And be like the dove that maketh her nest in the sides of the hole's mouth. Now that's our text for this morning. And we'll come back to that. But I want to go to our memory verse, which is found in Jeremiah 48, verse 28. O ye that dwell in Moab, leave the cities, dwell in the rock. That's a good sermon title right there. Dwell in the rock and be like the dove that maketh her nest in the sides of the hole's mouth. And uh, the New International Version says it this way. It says, abandon your towns and dwell among the rocks. You who live in Moab, be like a dove that makes its nest in the mouth of a cave. Our lesson aim this morning is to highlight the tendency of the dove to resort to a place of safety. And you know, our entire study has been focused on the characteristics of the dove where he um, will, uh, fo we focus on the, the characteristics of the dove where how he does things and how that dove will remind us of what the Holy Spirit brings into our lives. And one of these is safety. Safety. Let's look at some definitions that our study gives us today. The first definition is the word uh, safety. And the definition they gave is freedom from danger or hazard exemption from hurt, injury, or loss. 
The next one is the word refuge. Of course, I think I have a, another definition for the word refuge as well. It means shelter or protection from danger or distress. And then the word fortress, which means any fortified place, a fort, a castle, a stronghold, a place of defense or security. Those are important words for us to remember. And um, as I was studying, the Lord gave me some things to share with you about that, and we will do that as well. Uh, let's just continue. Let's look at this. In our introduction, I'm going to read just a little bit of that, but I want to spend a lot of time at our home daily Bible readings because those are some scriptures that were, that were paramount to this study on safety. It says, we live in perilous times. Danger is all around us. Innocent children are being killed. The cry in the African community is that black lives matter. Everywhere you turn, violence rears its ugly head. Schools, shopping malls, even churches are not exempt. You can be a victim of violence whether you're a kid playing on a pay playground, a teen riding as a passenger in a car, or an adult sitting on your front porch, which says to us, we don't have a place where we can just say it's safe. We used to could say church was off limits. It's not necessarily true anymore. You could say being at home was a safe place. Not necessarily so anymore. But when we're looking at this, it says no place seems to be safe. Yet, this is a dire need in our day and time. Oh, for a safe place. And this brings us to another important point about doves, especially as it relates to their nesting habits. In our lesson text, we see... Jeremiah pronounces woe upon Moab because of their rebellion against the Lord. And we want to talk about that against the Lord and their treatment of Israel. He tells Moab to flee from their cities and towns and to dwell in the rocks. He specifically tells them to be like doves that make their nests in the sides of the hole's mouth. The New Living Translation says live in the caves like doves that nest in the clefts of the rock. Notice where doves make their nests in the cleft. What I want to go to. My, my, my notes, particularly. I just want to, I want to hone a little bit there. Let's look a little bit at Jeremiah 48, verse two, verses 25 through 28. Now, when I read this, I read a little differently than what they have in this study. So I'm going to go from that point. It says, the horn of Moab is cut off. When we look in the scripture, it talks about a horn. It's really referring to the thing that, that uh, it, it refers to the strength of that particular entity. So it's saying the thing that gave Moab its strength has been cut off. And it is, it's pronouncing judgment uh, or woe or warning to Moab. And it says, his arm is broken, saith the Lord. So God is saying the thing that gave you your strength is gone. It's been cut off. You no longer have what you used to have. Your arm is broken. Make ye him drunken. Moab, you're going to be like a drunken person. And we know people who are drunken, and you may not, but people who are drunken, they have no control of themselves. They, they have no control. They are just, they, they, if you're in a car, you run into people. They have a false sense of reality. Um, all sorts of, they, they are unable to control their equilibrium. They stumble, they stagger. He's saying, Make ye him drunken. You are without control, though you think you do. For, and this is why, for he magnified himself against the Lord. He says, you thought you were bigger than you were. Moab also shall wallow in his vomit. He's saying your condition is about to change. He shall also be in derision. And that word derision, it talks of what it really refers to uh, is laughing at your enemy's threats. There was a time where Moab was laughing at Israel. He says, for was not Israel a derision unto you? You laughed at Israel? You thought Israel was funny because you were laughing at them because you thought they were without protection? He says, but now... You're going to be in derision. You are without strength. You are without protection. So he tells them, for he, here, for what was he found among thieves? Was Israel found among those who stole something? Those who thought that they had something, that they took something that didn't belong to them? Isn't that what a thief does? For since thou spakest of him, you skip with joy. You thought Israel was without strength. You thought Israel was one of those who stole something and they had no protection. And when you did that, you ridiculed them. 
you were happy. It's something, there's a scripture I need to share that I heard a pastor mention some months back and it blessed my soul. It blessed my soul. I'm gonna share it with y'all right now. I shared it with a friend of mine the other day and I'm gonna share it with you right now um, because it was just, it was just good. It was just good. And it reminds me of something that we need to be cautious about because when, when we began to look at the people of God and we think that somehow they're in a, uh, a judgmental position because God is judging them because of something they did. And we think they're without strength and they're without the hand of God. Their horn has not, is, is no longer, it's been cut off. The thing that gave them the strength has been cut off. Be careful. Here, this is in Exodus chapter 11. You better write this one down for your own benefit because it's, a, it's something that God spoke about the children of Israel. He says, this is the new century version. He says, but not even a dog will bark at the Israelites or their animals. Then you will know that the Lord treats Israel differently from Egypt. When I heard the man of God say this in April of this year, it blessed my soul. Because we should be reminded that God will always fend for his people. Even when they do things that they should not do, God will always remember the people who were so willing to stand there and uh, rebuke them or laugh at them. He will always come back and remember those who wanted to be the hand against them, the ones who wanted to be the ones who mocked them. Here, he says, when Israel was in derision, you skipped for joy. You were glad about it. He says, but now, he says, look, oh, ye that dwell in Moab, you better get out of here. You need to leave the cities, dwell in the rocks. You better try to find safety. But wherever you go, God's going to see you. Here, be like the dove. He says, this is, and I'm going to get to Psalm 91 because that's going to be a pivotal scripture where we talk about the safety that God provides. He says, be like the dove that makes her nest in the sides of the hole's mouth. He's talking about mountains. They, they, they put their nest high up so that predators cannot get to them. They put their young so far away that the, the things that would devour, that would make them unsafe so they cannot be protected, would not devour them. They would put them in, a, and that's the point of our lesson. He says, listen, if you want to find safety, look at how the dove provides safety for their nests. Let's look at this other scripture. And this is in John 16 verses 13 through 14. If you don't have the lesson, get your Bibles. If you're at home and you're, if you're getting ready for church, go ahead and get ready for church. But hear the word. John 16 verses 13 to 14 says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, who's that? The Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truth. Why? For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever, and these were the three things that I had not seen before, but I'm going to point them out just like this. Whatsoever he shall hear, he's going to speak. And whatever he speaks, he's then going to show you those things that, that are going to come to pass. He is going to reveal truth to us. He's going, and truth revealed will provide safety for us. When we are ignorant of Satan's devices, when we don't know what's to come, you may not see everything and he may not reveal everything, but he will give light as we get into the word for the next thing we need to do. He will reveal and unveil. But we must be listening because the spirit of truth is coming to guide you. What does a guide do? He shows you. He reveals to you. He unveils to you. He helps you to see. He helps you to understand. He's not going to speak of himself. He's going to speak what the, what the truth is, what's going to come next. He's going to show you. I keep reaching over because I think we need to see what's next. We need to have unveiled what's next. We are not ignorant of Satan's devices. And if we are ignorant, it's because we're not listening to the spirit of truth. 
When the spirit of truth has come, he's going to guide us. Why is he here? To guide us. The Holy Spirit is here to guide you. You're a born again believer. He's here to guide you. But we must let the spirit of God. We can't be obstinate. We can't choose to resist. We can't choose to have our own way. We've got to be willing and obedient to hear him. He's going to guide us into all truth. All truth. For he shall not speak of himself. So whatever the Lord Jesus is revealing, whatever is going to empower us, whatever is going to provide safety for us, whatever is going to help us, protect us. When we look at Psalm 91, it says, I'm going to skip over there and I'm going to come back. He says, I will say of the Lord. He's saying, I'm going to tell you how the Lord is. I'm going to give you examples of who God is. I'm going to show you how he behaves. He is going to be a refuge, a place of protection, a fortress for you. He's going to also be a deliverer for you. He's also going to be a place uh, where you can be covered. He's going to come and guide you into a place of refuge. We sing those songs that he would hide us until the storm is past. In your study, it talked about Milton Brunson's song. I printed the lyrics just because I wanted to be sure because I forget songs. I forget words. I do. I do forget them. But it, this song says, uh, the lyrics were, because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass. He leads me. In order for us to be led, we must be willing, but that means he's also guiding us. A guide, when you go on a tour and you've got a guide, you must follow the guide. We don't just wander off on our own because then you don't get the direction. You don't get the truth. You don't get the information. You don't get what you need while you're being, uh, while you're on the tour. You don't find the history. You don't find what you need for your next. Here, he lets me, he leads me beside the quiet streams. He restoreth my failing health. When we're allowing God to do what, when we're allowing the Holy Spirit to perform his role. When we look into our lesson, the scripture is that the dove represented the Holy Spirit resting upon Jesus, right? Right? He came to bring into our lives these things so that we would have all that we needed. When we start looking for all these things in Psalm 91 outside of him, then we ourselves end up in derision, it being a laughing stock, because we're trusting in something like Moab did. They magnified themselves against the Lord. Not so much that it was something intentional, but they relied upon their own strength. We sing that song, right? You are my strength. Strength like no. We sing that, but then we must really allow him to be our strength. He empowers us. He puts in us, whether that is uh, rest, we talked about that the other Sunday, whether it is rest, whether it is um, him pouring into us what we need to go forward in strength or to rest. And that what the song said, he lets me rest in the meadows grass. He leads me beside the quiet. We don't always get that quietness and strength, which the scripture gives us. But safety is not always in noise or in busyness. It is in what he provides for us when we need it. In the Song of Solomon, one of the scriptures there, it says, come away, my beloved. Come away. Sometimes it's just him saying, come away. Let me refresh you. Don't be busy. Dwell in my, in my presence, there is fullness of joy. At my right hand, there are pleasures 
forevermore. It's not always the busyness of church. It's not always the busyness of ministry because we can always be busy in ministry. All, there's always something to do and somebody will always find somebody something for you to do. God bless you all. I see y'all on YouTube. Hey y'all. God bless you. And we have to remind ourselves there will always be something trying to pull us away from the presence of God, receiving what we need from him. There is safety in him. I got to hurry. All right. We'll be out of time. So let's continue looking here. He says, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Paramount. He's going to guide you into all truth. Wherever he is not, we don't want to be. That, I mean, that's just wherever he is not, we don't want to be. Because wherever he is not, truth is not there. Because the truth you know makes you free. Not just free from sin, free from misdirection. Free from being caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. Hearing his voice. The scripture says, uh, you'll hear a voice. I got to hurry. You'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way walking it. So if you ain't hearing that voice behind you saying, this is the way walking it, don't walk in that way. Don't walk. He said, Psalm 1 tells us, don't walk a certain way. Don't sit a certain way. Don't stand a certain way. We need to hear what he's saying because the Holy Spirit comes to guide us into right, all truth. Y'all got it? So he shall, whatever he shall hear, that he's going to speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. Jesus said this. He's going to glorify me for he shall receive of mine from me and he shall show it unto you. That's a foundational principle. He's going to receive, a, he's going to glorify me. Foundational Whenever you see people glorifying themselves, be careful. But he's going to receive of me and he shall, re he shall glorify me and he shall receive of mine and he shall show it unto you. I want to read this in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29. And then I want to, um, I want to be able to read to you Jeremiah 48. I don't think I'll be able to read it to you, but I'm going to try. All right. Let's look at Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 29. It says, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. And Jesus said, I will give you rest. And it's such a paradox because in church and in our society now, in this culture, we hone in, and I'm not opposed to this because I understand busy. I do. I understand busy. But we can become so busy that we don't take the time to be safe. He says, take my yoke up on you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Here it is again. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. I wonder sometimes do we not have rest in our souls? Though we're saved, we're born again, we got the baptism in the Holy Ghost, we speak in tongues, we roll on the floor. Hallelujah, praise God. But do we not have that meekness, that lowliness in our heart, that humility, because we're so busy and we don't know how to rest. And we have so much agitation that when we don't have the busyness, we feel without purpose. But the biggest purpose is, the scripture says this, many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the purpose of the Lord that shall prevail. Are we finding the rest that the Lord promised in this scripture? That's where the safety is. That's where the safety is. That's where the safety is, beloved. He says, take my yoke. 
A yoke was designed to control the direction of an animal. And I know sometimes these, these I'm going to get to Psalm 91 because he gives all of these um, analogies and examples that were relevant to the people at that time because they understood it. But I want to make it relevant to us today so we can understand. But because they understood what a yoke was. You put oxen or your cows or whatever that were plowing the field in yoke so that you could, you could control them and you can get your, pl your field plowed. I mean, we don't plow fields anymore, y'all don't. I don't either, but you put them in there so that they would go the direction that the, pers the plowman or the person plowing want them to go down the road so they could break up that ground and sow their seeds or whatever they were doing. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I want you to be a disciple. I want you to be a disciplined one. I want you to learn who I am. I don't want you to be so scattered that you don't learn who I am. Learn who he is, I got a Bible today, through his word. It's awful to get to know somebody. It's not good, rather, it's not awful. It's not good to know somebody based on other people. You need to get to know people for yourselves. Get to know him for yourself. And the enemy would make you think that, you know, God is just horrible or that uh, other people are just horrible. Why don't you get to know them for yourselves? For yourself. Yeah, that's right. We have to get to know God because he wants to know you. He said, I, I want to know you from the least to the greatest. I want, I want to put my spirit in you so that you would know me. The Holy Spirit in us helps us to connect to that's another story, or that's another subject. But he says, come to me, all of you that are laboring and you're heavy laden. Laden with what? All the cares of this life, all the burdens you're trying to carry, all the things that are weighing you down that you're not safe with. Because if you've got too much stuff, I was looking for props, I don't have none. But if you have a whole bunch of stuff, You've got suitcases and suitcases and suitcases. You've got trailing behind you of all the things of your past, the things you can't even carry, heavy laden. Bur I don't have another translation either. On my phone I do. That we're trying to carry. You're, you're carrying all your stuff, all your mom and your daddy's stuff, your great grandmama's stuff, all those thinking, those thoughts you have that are binding you up, all the ways that you're trying to, I ain't going to let nobody, you know, run over me. I ain't going to be nobody. You've got all the heavy laden, beloved, let it go. He says, come to me. I'm going to give you rest. You don't have to fight your own battles. I got you. I'm going to give you rest from that and I will fight for you. I want you to receive me. I'm gonna give you rest for your soul. I'm gonna protect you. I'm gonna take you like that dove does. I'm gonna hide you. I'm gonna protect your mind. I'm gonna protect your heart. He says, for my yoke is easy and my burden, the thing that I want you to carry, it's even light. And why is it light? Because God gets in there with us. He gets in there with, he doesn't leave us so that we're by ourselves. He carries it with us, but we must let him. Let's look. All right, got about 16 minutes. I think I can do it, we'll try. Psalm 91, one of our favorite passages. Y'all know this passage, you've read it. Here, this starts at verse two. He says this, I will say of the Lord. I'm gonna, he said, I'm going to talk about the Lord. This is how I'm going to describe the Lord. This is what I want to tell you about God. When you get to know him for yourself, you can start telling people about God too. What, what he's, there's a song we sing, song that says, you don't know like I know what he's done for me. You don't know. He says, you can't tell it. Let me tell it. I may not have your testimony, but I can tell mine. We can, what's that song say? It says, he saved me, he saved me. Honey, you better thank him. Here, let me read verse 1 for good measure. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. This is good measure. I need to start right there. That already tells us it's a secret place. It's already someplace that's safe. 
It's already someplace that's safe. It's a place that the enemy can't find. It's a place that is safe. He that dwelleth, the word dwelleth means it is where we reside, where we uh, take up residence. We that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under, that word abide means to lodge. It's where we live under the shadow of the Almighty. And here he says, I will say of the Lord. And there he begins to talk about and describe who God is to him how he's seen God, and how God has been portrayed. And these are three areas. I'm going to cover three. I'm going to cover three. And this is how he describes his relationship with God, how God has presented himself, how he's seen God work. Number one, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. What is a refuge? Glad you asked. A refuge is a shelter. Shelter from danger. Shelter from falsehood. Doesn't mean people not going to lie. It means he protects you, your head, your mind, in the midst of all the danger. Protects you from the things that would cause you harm. The word refuge also means hope and trust. A place of hope. The Lord, I will say of the Lord, he is my hope. My expectation of good. Can't be in this world, right? You're not expecting, I mean, we're going to see good in this world, but it can't be the world itself. It has to be the Lord while we're in this world. I would have fainted had I, believed, had I not believed to see the goodness of the right of the Lord in the land of the living. My hope can't be in the world, has to be in the Lord who is my refuge, my hope, my trust. We sing that song too. I will trust in the Lord. He says, I will say of the Lord, he is my fortress. What's a fortress? And I've discussed this before because I've covered it on Grace for Today, but I didn't share it. Did y'all share? Oh my gosh. Y'all need to share. Y'all need to share. I did not ask y'all to do that, but I hope you did. Okay, y'all share. Mercy, mercy, mercy. I forgot. I got too excited. So if y'all will share just a moment, I'd appreciate it. Okay. This is, I was ready for the lesson. All right. So here, this word, fortress, it is a stronghold. It's a military term. It's a military term. It is a defense. It is a place where you can go and your enemies cannot access you. It is usually impenetrable. Also, whatever you need is inside of the fortress. It's inside. Typically, it can also be a mountain castle. A mountain suggests that you are so high above, you can see your adversary before he even gets there. You see them afar off, which means you would see them in a distance and be able to be prepared before they get there. What did we just read over there in St. John? He said that whom the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. Whatever, he's, whatever he shall hear, he's going to speak, and whatever he speaks, he's going to show you. So that means we see in advance. The scripture says that a wise man foresees evil and he hides himself. He makes himself safe. He makes himself safe. And then there's another scripture that says that if the man of the house had known when the enemy was coming or the thief was coming, he would have provided, he would have prepared himself. But we are not unwise. We know the plans of the enemy. We see what he's trying to do. We are, are not ignorant of his devices. I want to get to another scripture down here. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. That's the first one. How did he see God? He saw God as a refuge and a fortress. My enemy, though he is still my enemy, I am protected because he is my God 
and he is going to protect me. He is a refuge and a fortress for me. Secondly, he says, surely he's going to deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. These are not things we're familiar with, but let me just make this relevant for you. This word snare is a trap, though it means a trap or bird trap. A fowler is a hunter, a bird hunter, a trapper, for example. Y'all watch some of the older movies, you'd see this in some of the, the movies. People who would make traps and they would set those traps out to catch prey, P-R-E-Y. He says that the Lord, my God, he's going to deliver me, rescue me from the traps that the hunter, who's the hunter? the enemy who's roaming to and fro throughout the earth, looking to devour someone, that's him. He's going to deliver me from the traps of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Hmm, what's that? Let's look at that. Here's some definitions. The word noisome, it means, and I know uh, we often think of uh, just noise, but this word in the Hebrew, it means desire in a bad sense. Not in a good sense, in a bad sense. Remember that scripture in, uh, oh, I've got nine minutes. Do you remember the scripture in the New Testament where Jesus told Peter, he says, the enemy desires to have you and to sift you as we. The enemy didn't want nothing good with him. He didn't want anything good. He wanted to destroy or to, he to wanted to engulf Peter in ruin. He wanted to destroy him. Same thing. That thing that would have destroyed you, that noisome pestilence, the word pestilence refers to plague or disease. Whatever the enemy designs to, desires, designed to ruin you, he says here that he is going to deliver me from the noisome pestilence. Those things that the enemy plans to destroy my life. Even if I unintentionally participate. One of the things that I, I prayed for uh, one of our, our Grace for Today viewers, praying that God would reverse what the enemy intended. The things that they did when they were sinners, how their bodies were racked because of the things they allowed. That God, and God is able. He saved, they're saved now. That God would turn around and reverse it. Because God is still a healer. We have the authority to pray. We just need to line ourselves up with that. He says the third thing, he shall cover thee with his feathers. Oh, I want to I want to go back. I want to go back. I need to go back. That word snare. I, these were such good definitions. I want to go back. I want to share this with you here. This word snare also means this is so good. This word snare also means calamity, plots, or agents of calamities. He's going to deliver me, my God is going to deliver me from calamities, from plots. There's something that I share often, that the Lord will deliver me. Uh, it says that um, no weapon formed against us will prosper. Um, it will not produce, the way the Lord gave this to me when I was praying some years ago, uh, he will, the, the plots, plans, and ploys of the enemy will not work just will not produce what the enemy intended. It will not work. It will not work. So here he says the snare of the fowler. That word snare means the plot or the agents of calamities. It's not just that he's going to do it. I have to cooperate with him. I must cooperate with God. But what was the caveat? It was in verse one. You got to dwell in the secret place of the most high. He's hiding me. He's hiding me. I'm abiding, lodging under the shadow of, I'm not coming from under there. I'm staying with him. I'm staying with him. Let's move on. I have this last one to do. Run out of time. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. Now, some of y'all grew up on a farm. Y'all know what that's all about. When you have those mama chick, mama, mama hens, and they have all those little bitties, those bitties can hide under those, those the mother's wings, uh, and nobody can see them. She hide When she's sitting down, sitting down, is that the right word? Yeah, chicken sit, I guess. You couldn't see them until she got up, and they all were underneath her. She would hide them. And under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. They would protect us 
the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. Let me read this last scripture, and then I want to give you your study for next week. Proverbs 18 and 10 says this. Y'all know these scriptures because they've been a mainstay for many of you. He says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Who is that? That's us. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. We find safety in the name of the Lord. Listen, the thing we must remember that we always seem to forget is that God has left us what we need to be safe. Don't run from God. You run to him. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of God raises up a standard against him. But we can't be on the other side of the standard. We got to be behind and stand with the spirit of God and let him do what he does. We got to be in the place of safety. And that's hiding the word of God in our hearts, knowing that we have the name of the Lord. We sing that song too. Oh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. I got to go. The righteous can, oh, y'all know that song. You may not, but anyway. The righteous run into it and we're safe. Here, verse 20, chapter 29, Proverbs 29, 25. The fear of man bringeth a snare. I just told you what a snare was. It was a trap. A plot. A trap. A calamity. The fear of man bring. You don't need to be afraid of man. I don't care what man or woman it is or what they're plotting or devising. Doesn't matter how big they are, what, how, what authority they have. The hand of God is on us. We need to remember that. But whoso putteth, putteth is a continual thing. His trust in the Lord shall be what? Safe. Whoever put their trust in the Lord shall be safe. Where do you want to be? Safe. I want to be safe. You want to be safe. We want to find ourselves safe. And if you are safe, you will find the Holy Spirit guiding you into all truth. Listen, I don't want to be anywhere else except wherever the Lord is guiding us into truth all truth. I want to be able to share with you our study for next week. My time is almost gone and I want to pray with you before we go. So let me try to put that in here real quick for those of you who are on Facebook and hopefully I can put that in. Okay, there you go. And let's go to YouTube. Let's pop that in real quick so you can have that for your study. Don't forget to, you know, screenshot this or whatever so that you'll be able to have it. Let's see. Will it let me do that? Hmm. Um, why does this always look it's turned off? But I want you to be able to have this so you'll have this to study for next week. It says comments are turned off. Um, yeah, there we go. All right. Oh, too many words. But let's, I want to be able to send that to you so that you'll be able to study for next week and be able to read with us during our uh, study but this gives you all of the scriptures for next week and that way you'll have what you need to uh, prepare for our lesson for next week so there you go you have that for our study for next week let's go ahead i've got two minutes so i hope that that's blessed you but remember this we have safety because of our relationship with God. Beloved, don't let the enemy tell you that you're just left up to whatever happens in your life. Don't let your day drag you by the hair and that whatever just happens, just happens. The devil is a liar. No weapon formed against us will prosper. It will not produce what the enemy intended as long as we keep ourselves in the safe place in the word of God. Next week, our study is on the anointing. I believe it's going to be good because anytime you're talking about what God brings to us and gives to us, we're going to have a wonderful uh, time studying this. So join us next Sunday morning. Father, we thank you so much for what you've done. Remind us this week of your word. Speak into us even the more. We receive these things done in Jesus' name. Hey, our time is gone. Join us next Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Worship begins at 10 a.m. We hope to see you then. Don't forget to share the video. See you all then. God bless you.